The deadly Chicago three-way is an old two-wire method used to wire three-way switches. Have you ever seen one of these before? If not, you're going to be amazed at how these are wired. The method was designed to carry unswitched power through both of your three-ways and continue on to other lights and receptacles on the same circuit. And this was all done using just two wires between each box. They can be very confusing to wire when rewiring switches in older homes. And since they use just two wires, they're not easily converted to a modern method. So in this video, I'll show you how they're wired, how they actually work, four reasons why they're dangerous, and some safety precautions that you should take when working around them. There are actually four methods used to wire three-way switches. The Chicago three-way, which we're going to cover right now. Then we have the California three-way, the dead-end three-way, and then the standard three-way, which is the most common method used today. Let's go to the whiteboard. Up here on the left, we have our hot and our neutral coming into our first receptacle. We'll call this receptacle one. Then we have our first three-way switch down here we'll call switch one. Our second three-way switch, switch two. And our receptacle over here we'll call this receptacle two. Then of course up here we have our light. We're going to carry two wires, hot and neutral, from receptacle one to three-way switch one, onto three-way switch two, and then up to receptacle number two. And of course, each switch will control our light. The Chicago three-way method was very common with knob and tube wiring, which had just two wires, hot and neutral, but no ground. Three-way switches have two gold screws for our travelers and one black screw for our common. But remember, these aren't standard three-ways, so we're going to wire these differently. We'll take our hot feed wire from receptacle one down to one of the gold traveler screws on switch one. Then we'll take our white neutral wire from receptacle one down to our second gold traveler screw on switch one. Now we need to connect our switches together. We'll carry our black hot wire from the gold traveler screw on switch one over to the gold traveler screw on switch two. Then we'll carry our white neutral wire from the gold traveler screw on switch one to the gold traveler screw on switch two. I know what you're thinking, this looks like a short circuit, but it's not. Then from this same traveler screw, we'll carry our neutral wire up to the neutral terminal on the second receptacle. And then our hot wire, we'll jump over that, we'll go up to the hot terminal on receptacle number two. As you can see, we now have a circuit path from receptacle one to switch one, to switch two, up to receptacle two, the return from receptacle two, down through switch two, back to switch one, and up to receptacle one. So these receptacles will be powered regardless of the position of either one of these switches. Bear with me, this will make sense in a minute. Now we need to connect our light. We'll take our black switch leg wire from the common screw on switch one, we'll jump over that, and we'll go up to the hot lead on the light. Then we'll take our white neutral wire from the black common screw on switch two up to the white neutral wire on our light. And that's it, our wiring is done. Looks kind of confusing, but now I'll show you how it works. Since we know that our power carries through the switches up to receptacle two, regardless of the switch position, we can erase these lines for now to reduce clutter and make it easier to understand. Okay, with those lines erased, let's get started. A three-way switch works by connecting the common screw to one traveler or the other, depending on the position of the switch. So let's say that switch one is in the up position. We'll use a red marker. And switch two is in the down position. So in this scenario, our line power will come from receptacle one down to switch one, through switch one, and up to our light. Our neutral return will return from the light down to switch two, through switch two, over to switch one, and then back to the receptacle. This completes the circuit, so our light will be on. But now let's move switch two to the up position. Line power comes from the receptacle, through switch one, and up to the light, just like before. Now our neutral wire comes from the screw shell on the light, down across switch two, 
over to switch 1 where it also connects to line power. Now both our hot tab and our neutral screw shell on the light are energized, but with no neutral return the light will be switched off. This obviously presents the hazard of having power on both the hot tab and on the neutral screw shell of the light, but also we have an energized light fixture that appears to be off. Okay, let's move switch 1 to the down position. Now our line power comes from receptacle 1 down to the traveler screw on switch 1. Across the traveler to the traveler screw on switch 2, through switch 2, and then up to the neutral shell of the light. Our neutral return comes from the hot tab on the light, down across to switch 1, through switch 1, and then back to the source. This completes the circuit, so again the light will be on. There are four reasons why this Chicago 3-way is dangerous. First, we're switching the neutral, which is not code compliant for lighting because it'll leave power at the fixture with the light switched off. Second, the energized wire switches between the white and the black wires depending on the position of the switch. White wires are typically used for our grounded neutral conductor if not re-identified as a hot or a switch leg. Having it energized can be confusing and dangerous. Third, we're reversing the polarity of the light depending on the position of the switches. Screw shell fixtures are polarized, meaning they're designed to have the hot wires connected to the small tab at the bottom of the opening and the neutral wire connected to the screw shell. When this is reversed, the screw shell is energized and it would be very easy to get shocked when replacing a light bulb. And fourth, having both the screw shell and the tab energized with the light off can be very dangerous. Assuming the light is turned off and de-energized when it's not could lead to electric shock or worse. So how do we stay safe? If you encounter a Chicago 3-way, don't assume that the white wire is your neutral. Don't assume there's no power at the fixture when the light is switched off. And with the screw shell energized, be very careful when replacing light bulbs. It may be best to cut off power to the circuit just to be on the safe side. The Chicago 3-way is an old, outdated wiring method that's been banned for decades. But they can be hazardous, so please be careful if you do encounter one. The next 3-way video in the series will show up right here once it's uploaded. But if it's not there yet, you may be interested in 5 really cool facts that many people don't know about wire strippers. I'll link that video right here. I'm John from Backyard Maine. See you on the next one.